Hello, right. everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Business as a Magical Practice. And I am delighted to have back on the podcast our most loved guest, Simone Soul. <laughs> and we are yay. Gonna be, yay, exactly. And we're going to be talking about uh, building a cult following. And if you don't know Simone, Simone is a life coach, a business mentor for coaches, and the host of the Joyful Marketing Podcast. She started out as a tarot reading hypnotist who loved the work of actually helping people but wasn't making much money at all, then figured out how to do the marketing and selling stuff in a way that doesn't feel gross. Then in 2019 and 2020, she made nearly a million dollars in coaching revenue and has coached dozens and dozens of coaches to get fully booked. And you've made way more than that now, right, Simone? Yeah. So last, when did we talk last? What, what, it well, was when was the last? December. Time? It was December. That's when the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I- if you guys want to listen, I exceeded, I looked it up. <laughs> yeah. I exceeded a million last, ended up exceeding a million, million last year. And I'm almost at 2 million this year. And it's what month is it? Is it July? July. Is it August? I literally can't yeah. tell what month it is. End right. of July. We're at end of July. End of July. <laughs> and we're almost at 2 million so far this year. So that's pretty cool. It is really cool. It's like more than double. Yeah. You know, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. Um, so thank you so much for coming back on the podcast and especially a few days before you're scheduled to give birth. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. This is like the last thing, like last public thing that I'll do before I become a mother. So <laughs> it's very feels very magical. It feels very liminal. And uh um I warned Sam in advance that I not sure what's going to come out of my brain because now nowadays I find myself starting sentences and not knowing how to finish them and just like my brain is mush but I think there's magic in mush so we'll just go with it there's definite magic in mush so um we already chatted about this a little bit before but I wanted to bring you on to talk about cult followings because I see so many people trying in the personal development space if they're coaches or they're um, teachers or whatever in this online world of marketing and business. And they're trying so hard. They have a gazillion upsells and downsells and salespeople working for them. And then there's like three different email series going out, depending on the actions of the people. And like, I'm like, a part of me is like, that is so sexy. Like, yes, let's complicate all the things. That sounds great. That, and the other, because you like me, systems. I love systems. And, and like, it, I think it's also right. like trying too hard. Like, like, it's like, oh, proof that you have like an established business, which is ridiculous. But oh yeah. Cause like the complexity is like yeah. proof of how legit it is. Yeah. <laughs> then there are unicorn businesses like yours. I like to call clients like you unicorns um, because they are just, they're very much using their magic and uh, it's laced into their business and they're just transforming their clients so much that it's like just so simple and straightforward. So you've made multi-millions and uh, with a few thousand people on your email list and that follow you on Instagram. So um, I'm claiming you have a cult following, but we've already said like, let's, let's look into that term and see how you feel about your following. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious though, when you, when you describe me, cause so Sam has, I, I think you have like a lot of very, um, you, you have clients who are entrepreneurs who do very well, you know, seven figure entrepreneurs, six, like multiple six figure entrepreneurs. Like, I don't know exactly who your client tells us from myself, but, um, and when you, when you describe me as a unicorn, what do you, I'm curious, like, what do you exactly mean by that? Because like, I'm not the only one who is like, I don't know. What do you mean by that? Um, okay. So we're, we're, ta- we're, we're, we're stepping away from cult followings. Well, I guess I, I feel like the, no, I think it's all the same it, topic. So yeah. I, I feel like unicorns for me are business. Usually it's a person as the head of the brand of the business and they are, they get to seven figures and they're doing it with so much magic involved and just so much personal work that the energy 
within them mm. like ripples out. And yes, business structures mm. come out of that. Of course, like our man- manifestations require structure and actions, but it very much comes from the mm. person who runs the business. Um, and that heads the success. And of course, like the A team that you build helps with that, but yeah. it starts with that centerpiece. Um, so, and they mm. are, they like, and they don't, they don't have insane ad budgets that get them like, maybe they are running ads, but like, if they stopped running ads, they would still have a successful business and right. they don't, they don't rely on really complex funnels because they focus more on their content and their offers just being that good. See, when you say that, I'm like, why the way I feel about that is like, why would you want to build a business any other way? <laughs> <laughs> like, cause like, why would you, cause I mean, this is part of me, like I'm getting to this multi-million dollar level and being just kind of like, I just got here and I look around and I'm like, I don't understand what other people are doing. Like, why are they, why are they, I don't, did I just do something weird? Like, you know, and kind of like getting a, an understanding of just what other paths are our paths are available to get here. And the reason that I think that my way is the best <laughs> is because it's, and I'm going to say at least my way is the best if your brain works like mine a little bit. Right. And I think the reason is that um, I don't like the idea of my business being my business revenue, my business relationships being dependent on ads and like whatever Mark Zuckerberg decides to do, right? And I like the idea of being fully in control. And I like the idea of my business being something that's very personal to me and very much an expression of my soul and my creativity and my and the difference that I want to make in the world and my my ideas. And I have to say that's, I don't think that's like better or worse than anybody else's approach to business, but I know lots of people for whom like, yeah, business does not need to be like an expression of my soul. This is not like my art project. It doesn't need to be, it just needs to solve a problem in the world and make me money. And that's, I think that's a totally legitimate way to think about it. But when, to me, I'm like, where's the fun in that? (laughs) You know, because I'm such a, um, I don't know if you like looked at my human design, it'll probably tell you whatever the fuck is going on, but I'm such a, what is your human design? We haven't talked about that. I don't fucking know. Like I got it. <laughs> I, somebody did, I did, I, somebody did my chart and I was like, all of this just sounds like total gobbledygook. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. um, and I, I gave up trying to, I gave up trying to understand. Everybody asked me like every probably, like, probably like a couple of times a week, every single week, somebody's like, what's your human design? And I'm like, fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, I'm kidding. Like I super respect uh, human design and, and I get that lots of pe- people, it means it, whatever, people love it. Great. I'm not dissing it. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense to my brain. There's like too many words in it. Um, where was, what was I talking about? Oh, right. So for someone like me, right? Like I love, I thrive off of deeply meaningful, personal, like, ideas like if I meet you like I don't have time for a small talk well I can make time for it but I'd rather be diving right into the deep juicy conversations about things that really matter right and I'd rather really get to know you I'd really get to I'd rather get to know the depths of your soul and I'm happy to let you into the depths of my soul and that's the kind of person I am and I like to be expressive and I like to feel seen and known right and not necessarily in a a self-indulgent way even though there's nothing wrong with that but I want to feel like we're having a meaningful conversation I want to feel I want to feel like uh when I show up and talk to you um in real life or online whatever you're getting a sense of a real person right And, and ideas that really matter um And because those things are what excite me and that's the kind of person I am, I think that's how I, how I built the business. And if you're, if you're like me, 
um, then if you try to build a business in an impersonal way, it's not going to be fun. There's going to be no juice in it, no matter how much money it makes you, right? And um, what what gets me the most jazzed is going to work and talking to my people and knowing that there are people on the other side of the screen who feel so deeply seen and understood and loved by what I'm putting out there, right? And it's not just like, oh, this helps me solve a problem. Thank you. That's useful. Um, of course, that's good too. But I, I, to, it's really meaningful for for me to go to try to go beyond that, right? And um, and that starts with me having the vulnerability and the courage and the willingness to be really seen as a human um like be beyond and, and beneath all the ideas that that I sell right like first what I sell is I sell business coaching and business mentoring for life coaches and I think that if you just look at the most pragmatic layer of things right I think my what I offer is excellent, right? I think if you just want, like, I want to make more money. I want to get more people following me. I want my copy to convert better. I want to sell more. I want to get, you know, have a great niche. Like I can, I I'm like, yes, on the pragmatic level, I feel like I've gotten so good at solving people's problems in a way where they're going to um, see, you know, pragmatic results and they're going to you know, it, it's not just like, like spiritual ideas, right? Like it's, it matters to me that my ideas work for you at that level. But at the same time, if that was all I was going off of, I think I would have so much more competition, right? Because there is just, there are so many business coaches in the world because the rules of business, to paraphrase Elle Woods from Legally Blonde, are, you know, they're finite and, hold on, what's the rest of that sentence? Finite and Rules of hair care. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, we can Google. No, okay. There's gonna be people listening to this podcast who are gonna be like, "I know what you're talking about." I'm so excited yeah. that you're quoting oh, Legally God. Blonde. <laughs> Hold on, legal rules of hair care are finite. Oh, the simple rules of hair finite. care are simple and finite. Any Cosmo girl would have known, right? <laughs> So, okay, Sam, I'm deeply disappointed in you as a friend that you you don't know this quote and that you don't know that it's from Legally Blonde. Please go watch this movie. Oh, again. Man, I've seen it so many times, but I'm not a quote person, so I cannot. Oh, okay. Well, then <laughs> when, I saw, when I saw that exercise gives you endorphins, endorphins make you happy. I remembered what part you were talking about, but I had to see the happy movie. people don't murder people. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm deeply obsessed with Legally Blonde. Um, so yeah, rules of hair care are simple and finite and rules of business are simple and finite, right? Like it's just not that, it's not that complicated. I think to do it well requires a lot of inner work from you, but it's not rocket science. It's not advanced fucking calculus, right? So um, because of that, anyone can, like if, you, if, if you've achieved a degree of success in it, you can teach it, right? So it's, if you were, here's, okay, I'm like going in like 10 different directions, but Here's the problem that I see with like trying to um, sort of like lean on just the pragmatic, here's the problem you have, here's the solution that I'm going to give you, here are the steps, whatever. The problem with do like relying on that to be your brand and relying on that to be your product and relying on that to do the selling for you is that the, the nuts and bolts of, of that is something that anybody else can offer, right? Because no matter how brilliant you are, like there's nothing in the world that is all that original, yeah. right? Like somebody has said it before, again, the rules of anything, business, weight loss, like uh, relationship hacking, whatever, it's all simple and finite because all humans work basically the same way. Business all works basically the same way. So how you really stand out, how you become unique is when you filter all of that through the sort of the unrepeatable essence of, of you, right? Like that flavor of you, um, no one else on earth has your exact human design probably or, or astrological chart. Like there's no one else like you. And when you truly can offer something that looks and smells and feels like the unrepeatable authenticity of who you are now, that's something 
that will be that will have no competition like there's somebody that I quote um, often when I talk about this is my friend um, KJ Sassy Pants, who I've had on my podcast a couple of times. And she says, like, when, you know, getting to know your brand should feel like sinking into a warm bath tub of Eunice, right? Like when somebody comes sees your stuff, when somebody signs up for your email, when somebody goes to your website, does it feel like sinking into a warm bath of Eunice? Right. And I love that metaphor because it's so tactile and it's like you know um and it's it really gets to the energetic side of things right like does it energetically feel like you or are you saying all the right things you have you have the right look and it looks all slick and and put together and fancy but energetically it's wonky because your soul isn't there right so um I don't even remember what the question was that you asked originally. Well, we've gone in a few different directions. I want to, I want to pull back to one point, which is I, I feel like people lean on really, really com complicated systems because they don't have confidence in more important elements of business or in my opinion, more important elements of business, yeah. or they, they haven't, they haven't done the work to either create an offer that they're really confident about, or they haven't done the mindset work to get confident on the offer that they have. Um, and they haven't built the relationships or they're afraid to build the relationships. 100%. Okay. So rather so. like go and do like, I'd rather do the Facebook ad. So I don't actually have to make meet new people. I, I want to like do all the upsells and downsells because I don't want to like go all in on my one thing, like stuff like that. I, I mean, I a hundred percent agree. And all the work that you are avoiding by going and making things more complicated is exactly the work that will that's the inner work that, but like, that's the inner work that if you do it is going to put you in so much more congruence, right? Like, I, I mean, I agree. Like why? Okay. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. The most, I think the most important, there's two things that are the most important things that you can do. And in, in, to build a simple, what Sam calls a unicorn business. And I think one is to offer something truly, truly excellent. And um, what, what I want to say is like sparkly, okay? And by sparkly, I don't mean, you know, anything else. What I mean by that is like sparkling with the, the integrity and authenticity and congruence of you. Right. And there is that like quality that an offer has when it is truly backed up by honestly earned expertise, when it is truly backed up by congruent belief, right? From you. Like you are so clear about this is who it's for, these are the results that it's gonna get you, and this is this is what it takes, and there's no wonkiness in your belief about any of that right and you are it's just so like um you're just so aligned when it comes to every aspect of what that offer is how it's priced who it's for how you offer it how much and you just believe in it like a million percent that that's what the what i mean when i say a truly excellent offer right and most people don't have one not because they're not capable of it not because they're not excellent people but because um we get into so much drama and we so much indecision and doubt and we flake out on the work that it takes to develop that level of coherence, right? Develop that level of um, skillfulness, um, the inner work that it takes to develop that level of authenticity, right? And so if you have something that's truly sparkly and uh, truly excellent and valuable in that way that's rare in the marketplace that in itself is going to do like 80 percent of the selling and the marketing for you because people can smell that quality from miles away right and it's going to make your offer stand out from the sea of offers where it's, a, it's like you can tell that the business owner only kind of like kind of sort of believes in it and they're ready to bail on that offer as long as like their next launch doesn't go as soon as their next launch doesn't go the way they think right like actually that's a really good question like what would it take for you to bail on your offer right and for so many people the answer is like so little right 
uh, just because and and it's like it's like dating a person it's like being in a relationship with the person like how like what would it take for you to bail on this person and and for honestly like if you're not that committed like most people aren't that committed to anything right and um if you're constantly questioning it in your mind if you're constantly ready to change and like tweak um with some aspect of it just to see if it'll sell better like if you're constantly questioning your niche you're questioning your price questioning do i have the right people like blah, blah, blah. that's all just like signs of like non-commitment right and um people can smell that so that is what takes you away from that sparkling excellence that i'm talking about um and so uh, that's i said there's two things that's part one it's like the offer itself the energetic quality how like the the alignment and commitment and excellence and high high value and belief and all of that so much of that inner work that goes into that and the second part as you alluded to is the relationship building right it's like and i actually don't love the term relationship building because every time somebody else says it i'm like what does that mean? <laughs> but I think what it, to me, what that means is, and even like when people say like meet people, I'm like, oh, as an, as an introvert, I'm like, meet people. That sounds stressful. But, but what I mean well, by in that in is, that world, they can just be show up sometimes. Yeah, like, exactly. So I think what, it, what that, what that means is doing the inner work in yourself first to get to know who you are so that you have something um uh, so that when you show up to the world you are showing up in a kind of wholeness right and you're ready to be seen and witnessed and met in your wholeness and inviting people into the relationship with you inviting people to to see you um and to witness you and to love you um and to be in your to be in each other's presence in that wholeness, right? So um, a lot of, you know you're not doing this when you ask yourself things like, um, what do I say on social media, <laughs> right? Or how often do I have to post? Or um, if you find yourself like tinkering on canva for five hours if you find yourself thinking oh i need you know it's a bit if you're worried about it's it, i love to use dating analogies again and it's kind of like if you're trying to like meet a, a romantic partner like worrying about your outfit and worrying about like what shoes am i gonna wear and what what topics of conversation should i have ready to talk about and like just like you know obsessing about so, so being so busy obsessing about all of that that you're not asking yourself, okay, I want to meet a partner. Who am I? Like, what kind of, who am I offering when I am offering myself as a partner? What kind of life do I want to have with this partner? And what kind of person do I enjoy spending time with? And like, what, you know, like, just like the really, the, the really essential questions, right? And if you're, no matter how badly you want to meet a partner, if you haven't done the inner work to really know how to show up as your true self, right? If you have a wall up, we've all met people or we've been those people who just um, show up to a date with like a wall, like you can't know me, you can't hurt me. I'm just going to, right? And we play that game. And it's not because we're bad people. It's because we're scared, right? And we want to guard, like we are afraid to be known, right? And, and for at least for many years for myself, I didn't know who I was, right? And it's like, I was going and looking to, I was like flitting from person to person, kind of asking, can you be my mirror? Can you be my mirror? Like, I don't know who I am. Can you tell me who I am? If you want me to be this kind of person, I guess I'll try that out. If you want me to be that kind of person, I, I'll, just, I'll try that out because I really want to find out who I am. And of course, that's a disaster because nobody can tell you who you are. That's inner work you have to do for yourself. Right? And so I think a lot of the times that what people call like, you know, social media marketing, like what you should, what you should go out and do on social media, how you should present is like the, the version of that, like in dating, like, but, but in, in, in online business where you're just like trying on different personalities and seeing which one gets the best reaction, but without doing the work of truly knowing who I am, what I have to offer and 
who I want to spend time with, right? And when you figure that out, when you, again, when I say figure it out, it doesn't mean it's like, a, you know, binary one and done deal. But when you do that work, when you're constantly engaged in that work, you just show up differently. And all of the rest of it, like all the technical aspects of showing up and building relationships, like fucking like hashtags or whatever, like, you know, how you do reels, like it's, I mean, all of that is, it matters, but it all becomes so, so secondary because your energetic transmission is so clear and that stuff people into it like I think so much of relationship building online is about intangible sort of un unconscious communication that people can't quite uh you can't reduce it down to a mathematical formula right and people a lot, a lot of people spend time selling mathematical formulas and buying mathematical formulas so, oh if you do make this kind of reels and publish it x times a day and you know do this and use these hashtags and, blah, blah, blah. and none of that is like false that all works that's true but um, if that's all that it took, then everybody would just have the formula and it would, it would just work for everybody. But underneath that, again, it's like, I could put you in the perfect, most perfect outfit, the most flattering makeup, best hair, best shoes, and give you exactly the template for how to talk to, uh, you know, another person so that you look attractive and, you know, they want to go whatever, like, but that is not going to guarantee. You just outlined a rom-com right there. A few different rom <laughs> <laughs> yeah right but like that <laughs> I feel like that rom com's already been made but um actually <laughs> that's not necessarily going to create that you know soulmate relationship right and so to me it's the most interesting and the worthwhile thing to get to know so this is why if you love human design like you should go all into it so you can find out who you are because <laughs> to me that was a who you are Simone <laughs> <laughs> what everyone wants to know who you are with human design though okay i'll have i'll talk about that i'll have another human design expert on and just like have him do me because everybody's so curious uh, but anyway for me a lot of it you know was years of like therapy and getting coached and knowing getting to know who i am and owning my story and um and actually for me it was not human design but astrology that really cracked like archetypal astrology that cracked the code of, of me for me and it's not just it wasn't just like oh this is how you're supposed to be this is your personality the end it was very much like exploring the the the, the richness of the paradox of who I am and then not making any of it wrong and like looking at where sort of where the way I have been built is rubbing up against the standards of society and kind of um, understanding and like de-shaming, you know, all those like edges of paradox in the person that I, that I am and have been. And I think everybody has those edges of paradox, right? Nobody's um, makeup is like perfectly like in boxes and it's like makes, you know, and so, and I think that richness is what makes people so interesting. So I think without the work that I did to really understand myself and to know myself and to forgive myself and all the places where I was hating on myself, um, I wasn't available to be in relationship. I mean, like it's literally, it's the same thing with romantic relationships. Like if you don't know who you are, you're not available to be, or if you're not owning who you are, you're not available to be seen and loved by another person right? If you have a wall up because you're afraid to be seen, you're afraid to be known for where you're vulnerable, you're afraid to, you don't trust that you'll be loved for all the places where you feel tender inside, then you're not going to have that deep of a relationship with anybody, right? Um, if you are trying so hard to create a certain impression and make sure the other person is having a good time and make sure they're, they're thinking flattering things about you and making sure they you know, react in a certain way where they're going to want to go out with you again. If you're so focused on the other person's reactions, then you're not in your own self, right? And that you're, you're not full in your full sovereignty. And all the things that would not work in dating do not, do not work in, in um, showing up online and, and marketing online, right? So it takes, it took a lot of years for me to get to this point of like, you know, semi maturity when it comes to like romantic relationships to be like, this is what I'm available for. This is who I am. This is what I want. This is not worth it for me. That's worth it for me. Um, and I know that 
this is the kind of uh, experience that I have with another person. This is how I want to be known. Like it's, I, it took me so many years to get to that point in, in like romantic relationships. And it took me that many years to get to that point in like, in like business as well. And so I want to encourage everybody to not skip that work. Right. And, um, if this all sounds very abstract, more simply, I can ask you what, what, no, please go. I'll follow up on, oh, yeah, I'll just finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if this all sounds very, it's like, get to know myself. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, I can just ask questions like, you know, um, what are you afraid people are going to find out about you? Right. Like where, like, if you weren't trying, like, who are you really when you're not in a performing mode? Right. And why does, okay. So you have an offer, you want to sell it on like, why does it matter to you? No, but like, what, what is it? What does it really matter to you? Like, what's the really the truth of what you want to, what, what you want to offer the world? Um, what do you, what are you so like anxious for people to think about you? Right. And why, why does that matter? And not in a critical way, but like, in what ways are you trying to like control other other people's thoughts about you, mm -hmm. right? And and sort of like orchestrating your showing up to, with the goal of manipulating that, right? As opposed to, and, it, and if you drop all of that, how would you show up, right? And who do you want to spend time with, yeah. right? The same thing in relationships. Like, who do you want to be with? I spent so many years chasing like this being wanted and being loved, right? And I'd be, I, I'd be willing to be with whoever like wanted to be with me, but I never asked myself, who do I really want to be with, right? And I'd always be like, well, it's okay. Like they're fine because blah, blah, blah. It's okay that they, you know, have these horrible qualities because at least they want to be with me. <laughs> but then no, like I get to choose. Like I am the principle of my life and it matters more who I want to be with than if the other person want to be with me so same thing in marketing like who who your people are who your like fucking ideal customer avatar is is like what kind of people are do you feel at home with like what kind of people do you, does it light you up to think of trying to help like you know and you might not know the answer to that question and be able to answer in a way where it's like, okay, these people are like this and they're hanging out here and they're that. You don't have all the, you know, you don't have to have all those answers. I don't think I have all the answers like that for my business, but it's more like, like who, your body's gonna have the answer to that. Like when you're around a certain kind of person, your body is going to feel like at home. Your body's gonna feel relaxed. Your body's gonna be like, ah, oh, I don't have to perform anymore. I don't have to try so hard anymore. I don't have to convince them of anything. They just see me. They just get me and I can just be. And they just value who I am. And you get to, and those are your people, right? And you get to decide that they exist and you get to decide to talk to them instead of everybody that you think you have to do a song and dance for, right? So, um, so, Okay, now I like can't remember what I was talking about. So you can just swoop in and ask me what you're gonna ask. Well, I, I feel like it it feeds into an assumption that I've kind of come to, which is a lot of people who have some sort of cult following or have rabid fr fans, they're fairly controversial on some level, or they hold a controversial idea yeah. or stance, and yeah having a certain level of self-confidence and self-knowledge allows you to hold controversy at a frequency that actually resonates with people versus at a frequency where if you're just putting out controversy to be controversial, it, it, that's when you start getting haters and negative feedback. I'm wondering how that resonates. Yeah, totally. I think I, I don't think of myself as controversial and I'm not like in the grand scheme of things, like but but I think what I am am is very clear. <laughs> what I am am. You am am. Right. 
I I think I'm very clear in who I am. Um, so for the longest time in like dating, I try to make myself like less smart <laughs> because so much of the feedback I got was like, men don't like smart women and they're intimidated. It's fine if you're smart, but like they like it if you're like witty and smart, but not like intimidating smart, <laughs> right? So for the longest time, I tried to just be like, not like a lot less smart, but just like 10% less smart because I don't want to freak them out all the way, right? Um, or, and at some point I was like, fuck this, <laughs> you know, it's like the right guy is going to love me because of how smart I am. And so I, I dropped that act. And that's what I mean. It's like, there's going to be things where you're just kind of withholding just a little bit, right? For most people, it's not like complete denial of themselves. It's just like here and there, just like a little bit editing yourself down just a little bit, right? You're going to say like your opinion, but not like all the way, right? Like you're going to say, you're going to share. It actually <laughs> cracks me up so much when people do these, like, I'm going to be vulnerable online sort of like challenges. And they like, like, this is like, I'm going to be honest and show you the true me. But then all the things they say are like, this is not <laughs> this is not that vulnerable. Like you did not have like a nervous system breakdown after writing this. You know what I mean? Like I always question like the the um the test of like how vulnerable you're really being is like after you write this, are you like throwing up in a bucket because your body feels so triggered that that you are really being seen? Like I, I mean, I'm 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 not. Also, kidding, that, I find really. it interesting that you think vulnerability, true vulnerability, requires a nervous system triggering. Well, I, I, I do think that because you know why is because um, that means you're taking an emotional risk to be seen. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, I mean, obviously, I don't mean that like that doesn't it's not true in all cases, but I frequently have that experience with my own content because um, if I'm not taking an emotional risk to be seen, that means that I'm playing in the field of the known and the comfortable and the accepted. And it's just like, I'm going to show you exactly what I think is safe to show. Mm -hmm. And every time I push the boundary of that, I'm like, I'm pretty, my brain is telling me if I share this, I'm going to, everybody is going to like laugh me off the internet and I'm going to be banished from the tribe and die. So you should not ever share that. This is shameful. This is bad. You do not share that. Stay with a million other safer topics. That's always my cue to know, oh, that's exactly what I should share. Right. And um, I think that that's, that's what I teach in Joyful Marketing. And it's what built my business. It's what built my brand. Not this, not that I'm being like exhi exhibitionistic and like, oh, here's all my dirty laundry. It's not that. It's the quality of um, it's the quality of authentic relationships, like how much I'm, I trust you with the, with the real me, how much I trust you to, to see me and love me and to be with me when I take emotional risks to be known. Right. And that's the kind, that's exactly the kind of content where people respond like, oh my gosh, um, nobody talk, nobody communicates like you. Mm -hmm. Right yours is the only emails I ever open. I read everything you write. Mm -hmm. You're such a refreshing presence. Like what you said changed my life. Why? I mean, why aren't, why isn't everybody getting these responses? It's because they're not taking emotional risks to be known, mm -hmm. right? And so for example, going back to the dating example, it's like, okay, I'm really nerdy about like, I don't know, I'm actually really nerdy about a lot of things, but <laughs> I'm really nerdy about like, intellectual history if I like geek out on this part of intellectual history and like want to talk to you about renaissance humanism for the next hour right there's a good chance that you might completely you know think I'm a freak or just totally be bored or like think okay we're at a bar what are you doing right like there's there's so many undesirable responses that could come from that but then am I willing to risk the other person tuning me out? Am I willing to risk the other person thinking I'm a freak? Okay. So that was a kind of like a nice, you know, polished example. But if, if I 
share something that feels a lot more vulnerable, uh, something about something that something that I'm ashamed of, right? Something that um, I'm not sharing just to be exhibitionistic, but because I think it truly is a facet of human experience that I want um, other people to, I, like I want us to have this ex experience of humanity together. And I wanna talk about, I wanna explore this idea. And then I'm gonna talk about a, a, vul a vulnerable story that fills me with shame because I think it doesn't fit. I think it's not acceptable, right? And when I talk about that, am I, am I willing for people to turn away? Am I willing for people to say, oh God, we don't do that here, right? Am I willing for people to say, Oh, I didn't know she was this, you know, bit much of a mess. I, you know, and am I willing for all of those things to happen so that I could be known at the level of the intimacy that I am I'm seeking, right? And I think the most when I look around, most of the time, the answer is no, people stay on the surface because they don't want to risk they're not taking those emotional risks and then what happens is that their content just ends up sounding like blah 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 everybody else's content because everybody's playing on the same boring surface so how there there has to be a balance in there of uh being being vulnerable and being an expert uh like what you share or how you share it of do you or maybe you disagree of of it, what you share, the way that you frame what you share. But I think, I think my vulnerability is my expertise, uh -huh. right? Like, cause what I mean, like I said, it's not so much about being vulnerable or not, or sharing this or not. It's, I think it's about owning what's inside you and being very clear about that. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and when you share well, okay. So why I bring it up? Cause I, I sometimes see posts of people like doing this of like trying to be vulnerable or like sharing vulnerable stories, but they don't either frame it in a way or they haven't gotten to a, a sense a part of a piece of integration within themselves with it. And you see all the comments are like giving like, like, Oh, this person can help you go check out this thing. Or I'm so sorry. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. First of all, if that happens, that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. I think it it it's a journey. It's a process of trial and error, and it's a, it's a messy process for anybody to get to that level of integration. And even when you are there, you're not really there because there's a next level, right? So if that's happening, that's part of your journey towards authenticity, towards self ownership, towards uh, integration. So that's okay. And and what I want to say is that. Um, the, when you are asking other people to see you and, and, and witness you and love you, that's, that is not so that you can be whole, right? It's like, it, it starts with you seeing yourself, you meeting yourself, loving you and being whole in that. And then inviting other people to partake in that experience with you right? So it starts with you feeling whole in yourself, mm -hmm. right? So if you are not shaming that part of you, then energetically, you won't be inviting other people to like, feel bad for that part of you, right? And so when people to me, like vulnerability, vulnerability isn't really about like the content of what you're talking about. It's a lot more of like all the places, all the dark, weird, messy places in ourselves that we'd rather like brush under the under the rug, like how much self friendship, how much self, um, how much intimacy can you be with yourself when it comes to looking at those places, right? And then when you're inviting other people to be there with you, are you doing so from a place of feeling, you know, grounded and and uh, and you know just being at peace with yourself about it? Or are you like, okay, like this part of it feels really wobbly. Like, can you come in and make me feel less wobbly about it? Mm -hmm. Right. And so again, there's no perfection here. If you feel like, oh, I think I'm kind of getting this wrong. Like, so do I, like, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's totally a process, but, um, I would say maybe just because vulnerability, it can be such a buzzword, um, and misinterpreted a lot of times. I'd, what I'd rather say is like, being really um, like true to you and clear to you about like 
what you're trying to accomplish with something and why it matters to you and why it matters to other people when you invite them to share in that experience with you, right? Um, because yeah, like it, it's not so much about, oh, this super embarrassing thing happened to me or like, oh, I had this big failure. Let me tell you about it, right? Like, like, okay, fine. But then what are you really trying to say with that? Like what part of you are you, um, what, is that, what does that illustrate about the, your, the quality of your relationship to yourself? And how are you owning that? And when you invite other people to be there with you, what are you actually inviting them to, right? And and how deep does that go? Like how much of an emotional risk does that take for you, right? And what what work have you done to um, sort of to have your own back and to just own and love all parts of you before you ask other people to do the same, right? Yeah. So one of the questions I was planning on asking was, what do you feel like are the keys to building a following that wants to read everything you write and buy from you? And I feel like we've, I, I've, I've written down. Four. I answered all of it. I've written down four, but let's see if anything else come up. Having an excellent yeah. offer, yeah. A, a clear mission, self-awareness. I don't think that's the right word there, but like some level of self-integration, self-awareness, and then mm-hmm vulnerability or emotional vulnerability or being willing to be intimate with your audience how do you feel about those four what was the second one again clear mission yeah i mean yeah i i agree with i agree with all of those things i think um if i were to elaborate on any part of it just because i feel like i've everything i've said so far totally falls under you know, oh no, I was, I was said. making, I was making notes from when you were talking. That's what I got. Oh, oh, from. okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. just like, trying like, to oh, that's find like a nice, nice framework around the conversation. <laughs> um, okay. So what makes people want to read everything? Yeah. I think, you know, yeah. if I could simplify it even further, I think it would be the quality of relationship you have with yourself mm-hmm. plus the quality of relationship you're willing to have with your audience. You know, there were times when I was like dating so many people and none of them knew me, like really knew me because I wasn't available to be known, Mm -hmm. right? I was like, I was like a ball of fear and anxiety and insecurity, like in underneath like 10 different layers of armor. Mm-hmm. right and protection and so many layers of those the armor and protection looked like oh I'm like the like the fun cool like hot girl that you that like you're gonna have a good time with and is not gonna be all that threatening to you right and then I had my like armor of like my sense of humor I had my armor of like like I had a you know like all these sticks that I you know, used to do that was so effective in getting people to like to in effective in making me somebody that people like had fun spending time with but in none of that time I was truly available to be known right and that also meant that I wasn't available fully available to be to know the other person either right so that's what I mean by quality of relationship with others which really is is an offshoot of the quality of relationship you have with yourself, right? I think if I were to date again, which I hope never happens because (laughs) I am married. (laughs) Um, I think if whatever, knock on wood, God forbid, I would ever end up being in a situation where I'm dating again. Um, I think that I would focus on these two things, right? Like um, exactly the same in business, okay? Um, When, okay, so who am I now? Who am I and what, how am I, how do I know myself? How am I available to be known by myself? Which, okay, I want to elaborate on that question a little bit because I think this is such such a big theme in my life this year that I've been working on myself personally is that I've been so averse to know certain things about myself, right? For example, when I think about certain time periods from my past life. I mean, I don't mean past life, like reincarnation, like (laughs) just like 
you know, earlier in my life, right? Um, when I think about certain things that have happened, when I think about certain versions of me that I have been, when I think about certain things that I've done, or even certain uh, ways that I can be even now, like what I notice is that there's a kind of like, like embarrassed, shaming, turning away that happens, right? Like, oh God, I was a hot mess then. Like, oh, thank God I'm not that person anymore. Or God, I was such a selfish bitch that one time. I, that's definitely not who I am. And I, and like that Simone bad, right? Like that's when, if you imagine like a room full of different parts of me, there are parts of me that I had just like walled off that I'd like banished to the other room. Cause I don't want to see you. Seeing you makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to own you. Like, I don't want to look at you. La 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 la. You don't exist. Right. And so that's what I mean by being willing to be seen by your own self. Like, can you look at like the most embarrassing, shameful, bad um, part of you and be like, okay, maybe I don't necessarily like love you, but can I still accept you? Can I stop punishing you and shaming you? Can I look at you in the eye and say, you are a part of me and I will never banish you from my world, right? That's what I mean by relationship with yourself, how available you are to be your own friend, to be witnessed by yourself in all the different ways that you can be all the way, all the different parts of you. So that's, that's the first part that I would work on. Like, because from that completely based on that, you get to know, you know, um, how, how, how you get to know other people, what part of you, what version of you presents other people, like that all depends on, it all comes from your relationship with yourself, right? So um, to bring it back to what we're talking about, on like online business building, right? It's, that, that's, that's the work that this is about. Once you have that quality of relationship with yourself, then you can be so congruent and inviting other people into into um into the mix into that relationship too and you are going to be so clear in what that invitation is and who you are inviting because again if i'm dating i'm not going to be just dating anybody who's willing to spend time with me and tell me that i'm cute and funny and they like me blah 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 right it's like no 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 no. i want to have really intense you know, conversations. Like I, I want to go beyond the small talk. I hear these really gnarly parts of me. I want someone who can see that and not be impressed. I want somebody who craves these same things as me and uh, with me in, in life. And I want somebody who's, uh, who's as eager to know me as I am eager to know me. And I eager to know themselves and like all these things about like what really brings me to life. Right. Like I would ask myself these questions and then speak and make space, right? We talk about manifesting. You got to make space for what you want to manifest. And you got to do the same thing in your online business. Like this is the kind of people, audience, clients that I am available to. This is the quality of relationship that I'm seeking. And I'm only going to speak to them and I'm not going to make space for all the other like randos and not in like a, you know, whatever <laughs> judgmental way but it's like if you like love small talk i'm like we're not gonna spend time together because like why right you go talk to your people and i'm gonna talk to my people so if you consistently create cultivate invest in that space in that relationship building that is exactly how you get a cult following or what people call a cult following where people can't get enough of you because you have done all of this work to clear the debris of static, to clear the debris of the blah, blah, blah that gets in the way of a true, truly intimate, meaningful, juicy, magnetic uh, um, relationship where two people come together and something truly magical can happen. Right. So I really like what you're bringing up with making space because in what, what came to mind of like, it's, it's letting people in and then making time for them because I, there's a lot of people I talk with who are like uh, for more in the first few years of business and they want to build an audience. They want to build a following, but they don't want to respond to comments and they don't want to respond to DMS and they don't like, they don't actually want to spend time responding to the audience when they, their audience, when they engage with, with their own stuff. So why? Like, huh? I like, did they feel like they're above it or I don't think it's an above it thing. I think that like social media is draining to them or 
um, I just don't want to spend. Yeah, that's like the equivalent. Yeah. That's the equivalent of you like going to a bar and thinking you have to like talk to every single random person in the bar. Mm-hmm. And it's like, of course you feel drained. And it's like you, um, like if that's happening, what's probably ha- like, what's probably happening is um, you are, you're putting, um, you, you're showing up to, to social media without as a kind of performance thing like I have to do this and show up this way and check off these boxes and do this kind of thing as opposed to like showing up as a human who is truly available to be curious Mm -hmm. about other humans like what that signals to me is a lack of curiosity which Mm -hmm. signals to me a lack of presence Mm -hmm. like if you don't know what kind of conversation you're craving then you're not going to want to talk to anybody because like, for example, like I said, multiple times, I don't like small talk. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I think that I have to talk to 50 people and make small talk, I'm going to kill myself. Right. But then I'm like, okay, I I want that. I want really deep, meaningful conversations and I'm interested in humans and I want to go beyond beneath the surface. And I want to like, I want to, I want to be known and I want to know who they are. Right. And that's what I'm here to do. Then if you look at the comments on your Instagram, whatever, you're going to have a very different response. You're going to want to do diff- have a different reaction to, you know, than like, okay, I got to go talk, you know, con- reply to all these things so that the algorithm notices that blah, 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 blah. Right. So if you take it as a list of shoulds, um, a uh, list of boxes to check off to make sure you're doing your social media marketing right, then you're going to hate it, right? And if you're not clear, again, about how you want to be known and who you want to talk to and who you want to know, then you're not going to have the curiosity, which is make you, which is going to make you not give a shit, right? So again, it's it strip all of the, the blah, 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 and the shoulds and the rules and the what you got to do and the performance away and ask yourself, like, who do I want to be known by? Who do I want to know? And like, who are all these humans who are like in, who are intersecting with my world? And like, I, the only reason you have a business is because you want to be useful to people, right? And you want to connect with people. And so what's, how, how do I show up in a way where I'm going to create true connection and, and, and give them some kind of usefulness, even if, the, the usefulness is like creating a moment of genuine connection and making them feel like somebody gives a shit, right? And somebody's seeing them, like that is useful, right? So connect it all back to what really means, what what's really meaningful to you. Don't just go around like commenting on random things because somebody said, that's how you get more eyes on your thing. Like who cares, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I don't want to say who cares, like, because I don't want to dismiss, you know, all that works, but then you want to undergird all of the, all of those um, efforts, all, all the actions that you take with uh, an aligned intention that lights you up about the kind of relationships that you give a shit about, about what makes you happy, and uh, and how you want to be known and be and be of service, right? Yeah. Oh my God. This is so good, Simone. I feel like we just all got a masterclass on cult following building. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what my pregnancy brain is going to spew out, but I'm like, I feel like I just like gave a long monologue and I'm like, is anybody still here? Is everybody oh, still this here. <laughs> no, it's going to be good. I'm like excited to like go through and like try and like systematize it and like organize it. I'm excited. That would be such a, I'd be so grateful um, if, if, for you to do that because um, it, I think this is what happened last time too um, on your podcast. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And then I just like started talking and then we um, ended up, I don't know, I feel like we ended up like mining a lot of things from my brain that I didn't know needed to come out. And um, I think that's the same, that's the, you know, uh, oh, you know, um, that, that speaks to the quality of the space that you hold. And this time too, I'm having an experience of like, oh, this is all the, all the things that I've been like waiting to say, mm-hmm. waiting to articulate about like what it really means to, you know, I think so much of um, joyful marketing, um, my program, I'm, I'm teaching people how to do this, but in sort of like in, in <laughs> less intimidating, bite size, you know, more fun, you know, implementable ways where it's not like make yourself available to be known. And people are like, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Right. But 
but uh but when it gets to the heart of it like this this is it and this is to me so much more interesting so much juicier so much more soulful um than like let's talk about all the all the surface things which are so much easier for people to like spend so much time on because that you don't have to take as many emotional risks <laughs> yeah oh it's yeah. so good well thank you so much Simone where can everyone find you and go deeper with you um well I guess well come check me out on Instagram where I write stuff and everybody says I write I read everything you write and save everything you write because I practice what I preach <laughs> and um, on Instagram I'm Simone.grace.soul and um, from there you should get um definitely get on my email list because if you do what you're gonna get in your inbox is gonna blow your mind yes. um and uh, yeah from there you can you can learn more about me and I can learn more about you. Yeah. And you have an amazing course called Joyful Marketing that it takes us to the 10th level. So definitely check that out. Yeah. Too. So if you want to master all of the, what I'm talking about and start turning your business around, Joyful Marketing is the place to be. You join once and you get to have me as your marketing coach for life. And you get access to the most wonderful community ever where, where everybody's on board with understanding marketing as being about all of this. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of fun and you should join us. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Simone. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's so fun. I need, I'd like love to be here anytime. Oh, I'm going to take you up on that. Okay. Bye, everyone. You have a great week. Bye.